This house that my family has built over the last two years has a lot of different machines and a lot of different systems that interact with each other. And one of the most important ones that probably most any house that's built today is going to need is something to control the humidity. Now, you'll hear different terms thrown around when people talk about this and they get a little bit too jargony, like wet bulb and dry bulb and dew point and enthalpy. And all that stuff comes from a chart called the psychrometric chart, which is horrible to try to use. So you're going to use something like this that's a psychrometric calculator. And it basically is going to be able to measure how much water there actually is in air at different temperatures. The humidity metric that you're going to hear most of the time when you listen to the weather or when you were talking about indoor spaces is relative humidity. And the thing about relative humidity that is relative is the temperature. Air at different temperatures holds different capacities of water. So air that's 96 degrees can hold a lot of water. Air that's 32 degrees does not hold very much water at all. So even if it's snowing outside and you bring that air inside at 100% relative humidity and warm it up to 70 degrees like we like to have inside, it's going to be super dry, which is why you're going to have a big problem if you live in some place like the Yukon where I had a recent client. Uh, the air is going to be very, very dry there. So dealing with humidification is something that you may need to deal with in certain parts of the country depending on how tight your house is and depending on how much ventilation you have. And this is going to be a topic that we're going to explore more down the line, humidification. But for right now, let's talk about the much more pressing thing for the health of your buildings, for the health of your family, which is dehumidification. So we have put ultra air systems into our home, which is uh, the same company as Santa Fe, which is this psychrometric calculator that I'm looking at here. These are high quality, very energy efficient machines that can wring a lot of moisture out of the air. We've got two machines here. We've got one that can take up to 120 pints per day out of the air, and that's about 15 gallons of water per day, which is a lot. And we've got another one that pulls about 33 pints per day, which is about four gallons out of the air. And that's at worst case scenario, which we try never to get this house to be. So you can see from the graph of the humidity of our house that these machines are working very well. They're maintaining our relative humidity at exactly the point that we want, which is enough that we have comfort inside. We're able to keep the temperature slightly elevated because drier air feels cooler Using a psychrometric calculator, I can turn the relative humidity and the temperature to intersect at the same point, and I can see that the grains per pound that I'm getting at this kind of air is about 49 grains per pound. The dew point of the air that we're uh, talking about right now is about 47 degrees. For comfort and for health, you need to install these systems. Let me walk you through how our systems are configured so that you can get some ideas for homes that you're going to be either living in or working on down the line. In the crawl space that I made four feet tall so that I could fit sliding around here, uh, I was in a crawl space like this and I thought that it was pretty brilliant. We have enough room to fit everything that we need to run the house, all the engines that are needed. And we have more engines than probably a typical house has, not because we're going way above and beyond, it's because a modern house that does a lot of modern things needs more equipment to do some interesting things, partly because of the air tightness. So behind us here, we've got the heat pump, which is going to do the heating and cooling and a little bit of drying and a serious drying machine. Now, the dehumidifier has been running in this house for about a year now uh, since we got enclosed and got airtight. That should be a concerning moment for any builder when they finally build an airtight structure, but it's not quite dried out yet. Concrete takes a long time to dry. Lots of building materials we bring in here are going to be dry. Now, if this is running, doing a drying job, that's great. But you also have to remember to clean the filter because the filter can get pretty filthy when you have construction dust going all over the place. So you want to be especially cognizant of this. It's going to get clogged up uh, before too long. So that's a good thing um, that it's filtering it out. This happens to be a MERV 13 filter. So each of these is going to have a properly sized drinking straw to breathe through. Then we're going to duct them together once they've blown out their conditioned air. And that is a really important step to take. A lot of the dehumidifier manufacturers uh, have in the past put the air 
that's coming out of these, which is dry, and it's also slightly warmed into the return of your cooling system so that then it could go through this system. That's not actually a good way to do it. The amount of heat that comes out of a dedicated dehumidifier is actually pretty minimal when you're mixing it with air conditioned air in that supply trunk, which is where we're going to do it. If I was to pump this in here, what I've actually done now is dry this and I've taken away any drying ability that this piece of equipment has, flush it down the toilet. So I do want to get as much drying done as possible because remember drying is a very, very important part of controlling the indoor physics, but also chemistry and microbiology. So we duct them together after they've conditioned both of their air streams. And that's not something that you'll see in a lot of manufacturers literature yet. Hopefully that's changing in the next few years. The humidity controller that Ultra Air offers uh, is mountable any place. I could have put it up there with the rest of my array of sensors for my heating and cooling equipment, my ventilation equipment, my monitoring system. I opted actually to put it inside of the return plenum over here for ease of wiring and also just to keep the number of sensors out in my space to a minimum. I am aware that that might result in a slightly different reading since it's inside of a steel box over here. But all I have to do is monitor the humidity out here and set the sensor to activate at a set point that makes sense with what I'm reading out here. So if it's out here, I'm at 40%, but this says 45, that's fine. I don't really care particularly what number this is at as long as I can maintain the humidity that I'm looking for. Okay, that is how we install a test port. It's not called drilling a hole, it's installing a test port. Sorry about the noise down here, but we've got all kinds of different machines running and you wanna be down here while they're running because I wanna know what these are doing. So this is the big dehumidifier for the main living space. Uh, and I want to check the stats on this before I start testing it so that I know what I'm about to get into. And I always wanna know what number I'm looking for and I expect to see before I just get a number. Because perchance, my client pops their head down right when I'm getting my numbers and writing them down and says, what's going on? And I say, uh, not sure, I need to run some calculations. Just looks a little lame. I've got my Testo kit that's got all kinds of different tools in it. It's the 440 is what you're looking at right here, the gauge. Uh, I have wired up to it a temperature RH probe that I'm gonna put right there in the supply. I also have a static pressure probe in the return. And right now we're showing about negative 30 pascals. It's about a tenth of an inch of water column. So that's good. That's a very reasonable amount of pressure to have inside of a duct. In the supply, we have 92.8 degrees Fahrenheit and 18.1% relative humidity. That's pretty dry and it's also pretty warm. And that's one of the things about piping it into the supply is that it's going to slightly tamp down on the coldness of the air coming out. So it's gonna give me a smaller, what we call Delta T. And uh, that's not a bad thing because it means that all of the uninsulated ducts that you see behind me is not going to be a condensation issue. Now, monitoring the temperature and humidity in the supply plenum, where this duct that's carrying the dehumidifier just dumps in right there, it's gone from the 90s down to 77 degrees just by mixing with the air in the supply duct itself. And when the air conditioner actually is active as well, then the mixed air becomes 58 degrees Fahrenheit at about 65% relative humidity. And if you remember the dew point from the very beginning of our video here, we're well above that. So we don't have to worry about condensation resulting just from using the air conditioner. Now we'll use our mini van anemometer to go ahead and take the airflow in the system. So using a timed average, which means I'm gonna spend some time around each part of the duct, I'm gonna go ahead and begin my timed average once my anemometer is running. Got a pretty healthy clip. And you're gonna get different readings in different areas of the ductwork because air is squirrely. And if you picture like a, like a water slide at a water park, when you go around a, tur a curve, all the water goes up on the side of the thing. So right now we've taken this down, 
and it's all going to be hitting the bottom of this duct right here, for example. So I go ahead and pause. I hit stop. So we've got about 247 CFM at 450 feet per minute through this 10 inch round duct. And what makes these not holes, but test ports is that you cover them at the end, hopefully with something that's removable again so that you can test here in the future. So let's do some quick calculations. Uh, we're going to call these two streams of air, the return and the supply. When we return, we've got 74 degree air at 39% relative humidity. That is a 48 degree dew point at 49 grains per pound. All of that information came from the psychrometric calculator. Supply, we've got 93 degree air at 18% relative humidity. That is a 43 degree dew point, and it's only 41 grains per pound. Now, this piece of equipment, uh, which is a 120, so that means that it's uh, listed to reduce the humidity by 120 pints per day. And you always want to size, you know, like this is the most important metric about a dehumidifier is how many pints per day it pulls. This one pulls like more than six pints per kilowatt hour that you put into it. So there's energy efficiency ratings too, and that's important, but the, the amount of water that it can literally wring out of the air is important. This number is at 80 degrees and 60% relative humidity. That's insanely high. You're never, like that's a ridiculous number because even if you start there and you turn this machine on, it's immediately gonna bring that number down. And the more it brings it down, the less water it can wring out of the air because it's just doing a better job of making the air dry. Therefore, the air is drier, it has less water in it, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna find a number that's less than this. So the first thing that we need to understand is that uh, there's an equation. The equation is CFM times a constant, which is 4.5. This constant is the density of air, which is 0 0.75 times 60 minutes in an hour. So that's what that 4.5 is, times the delta of the grains per pound divided by 7,000. And that will give us our pounds per hour. So we know the CFM. The CFM is, when we tested it, around 240, I'm going to call it 248, times 4.5, which is the constant again, times the delta grains per pound is 8 eight grains per pound divided by 7,000 equals 1.27 pounds per hour. Now we can multiply this by 0 0.125. to give us 0 0.15, uh, we'll call it 1.6, 0 0.16 gallons per hour times eight, because there's eight pints in a gallon, and that gives us 1.3, we'll just go to round, pints per hour. Now that is, still a great number. It is not the same as giving us 120 pints per day. If I multiply this by 24, what this thing is really pulling is probably like 30 pints per day. And I'd just like to point out that this is not a failure of the piece of equipment. It is doing its job for being able to take air that's 74 degrees at 39%, which is not anywhere in the sales literature for this type of a machine. Nobody's gonna tell you what it's gonna pull at 75 degrees at 40% relative humidity. That, that'd be crazy, because it's not gonna look great. It's gonna look like this. Remember that the goal of this machine is not to pull water out of air. It is to maintain a humidity level in the house. And I'm gonna show you what the humidity level in my house over the past week looks like. The fact that we're able to flatline the humidity level 
is also part of the system. This machine is a beautiful machine, but it's also interacting with the air tightness of our house. And that air tightness is super, super important if you want this machine to work properly. You don't need to know this, by the way. Uh, if you have a dehumidifier, you do not need to run this test, but I just happen to find this pretty fascinating. And since we're exploring the science of homes on this channel, I thought that I would show exactly what is happening down there. You notice that the sheet metal ductwork does not continue all the way to the piece of equipment. That's important because number one, it's very difficult to have metal ductwork take any kind of an angled turn. So unless you get this angle exactly right, it's gonna be really hard to meet these up perfectly. So that's one, is that it fixes my flaws. But the other thing is that it decouples the vibrations that are gonna come out of this because this has a compressor in it uh, to run the dehumidifier. And it's going to not vibrate all the way back up to my metal boxes that are built into the structure of my house, therefore making a kind of a hum around the house. So all of the pieces of equipment in the house, we've tried to really decouple by both making sure that they have their ductwork decoupled with a little bit of flexible ductwork, and also that they're hung in this case from kind of a springy way from the ceiling or sitting on the floor, which is also decoupled from the frame structure above. Now, let me just point out that as far as ventilation goes in Florida, Florida has an interesting aspect to it, which is that the outside air for most of the year in central and southern Florida is above the dew point, which means that if that outside air gets inside or touches any of the inside surfaces, it will get that surface wet. That's kind of a critical thing to have happen. And so you wanna be very careful about bringing outdoor air in in Florida. So having something that both ventilates your home and dehumidifies at the same time is very useful. So the dehumidifier here has this feature, which is a third damper. We've got the in, the out, and we've got this. This is meant by the manufacturer to be able to be hooked up to outside so that you're bringing in some outside air, drying it out before you distribute it throughout the house. Therefore, you avoid that condensation potential altogether. And you are now slightly pressurizing the house, which means that that outdoor air isn't able to sneak in through any accidental gaps and cracks around the house because you've actually got air being pushed out all the time. That's one of those clever ways to be able to play with pressure imbalances to get what you want. In this case, I don't close this all the way. I actually have it slightly open so that I can depressurize this whole crawl space and keep air moving from the living space above down into the crawl space, which helps with that circulation. Since I can't have something like a ceiling fan down here moving the air around, you want to be able to have air movement. And so I've got one supply and then I've got this little bit of suction uh, so that I can induce those pressure imbalances again, trying to just tune the home performance and make the science of this home extra sophisticated, which is both fun and interesting. Thanks for coming to my crawl space. I hope that this has helped you and uh, made dehumidification more interesting and maybe less complicated than it was before. Uh, please do comment if you have anything else to add about any of the products that you saw used here or other dehumidifiers or dehumidification techniques questions, etc. This is a conversation, remember. Uh, also, please like and subscribe. Tune in next time.